video, I'll walk through the process of creating a new Ubuntu 22.04 server virtual machine, and then install Gemstone S 64-bit and WebGS, a web framework, on it. You'll see that the Ubuntu setup is done using primarily defaults, and after we've configured the disk and a default user, I'll import a public key from G GitHub so that I can use passwordless login with a private key, which is a good security practice. When the Ubuntu install finishes, we can reboot the machine without the install disk, and then we can log in from a terminal using SSH instead of the console. Now we'll add Gemstone's Debian package repository to our sources along with the public key. Do an apt update and then install the Gemstone server package. This will copy files and then ask for a password for system user and data curator to replace the default one that ships with the image. This is again a good security practice. When the Gemstone install finishes, I'll log out and log in again to get the environment variables so I can execute Gemstone commands. You'll see that my first login fails, but I can correct that. Now I'm going to explore the file system using VS Code connected to my VM. Gemstone has a daily cron job, but it's visible only to root since it contains the data curator password. Etsy Gemstone contains the usual config files used by Gemstone. The run directory contains lock files. User lib Gemstone contains the product tree in its own version subdirectory. User bin contains symbolic links to the various gemstone processes, start stone, stop stone, and topaz. Var log gemstone contains the various process logs, including netldi and stone, where you can see the new password entry in the security log entry, along with the other logs that are typical. Next, we'll look at WebGS, a framework for web applications. WebGS is hosted at GitHub and can be cloned into your local environment. After it's cloned, we can use VS Code to see that I've modified the Topaz any file with the new password. I can install WebGS using the install script and run a sample application. VS Code lets me open a browser on this application, and I can see the requests that are made, including a POST request to do an add. A GET request will show me the stone configuration, and then finally we can go and look at the WebSockets. WebSockets keeps an open connection between the client and server, where I can send messages to the server, and it sends messages back. I can disconnect and reconnect, update my message, and then that will update what the server has that it will send to me. When I'm done, I can stop the server. I can remove Gemstone from my Ubuntu environment to remove the trace of Gemstone being there. We'll look further at WebGS and the Smalltalk side of it, how we implement the web framework in an ESUG presentation and perhaps subsequent videos. Thank you for watching. I had a five-minute video and was trying to debate whether to show it or not, and then I decided I could show it during the five minutes before people come, and then uh, that would count. So, I am James Foster. I am here to talk about Gemstone and Gemtalk. 
As some of you may know, I am both in academia and business, and so I am teaching computer science students at Walla Walla University and introducing them to small talk, among other things that uh, I get to teach. So in Gen Talk, the company, um, 41 years of operation, although it's then through a number of different companies, as the industry tends to go in this sort of thing, founded as Servio Logic, the first version of Gemstone shipped in 1986, then went through various uh, buyouts, uh, acquisitions, spinoffs, and we've been as Gentalk Systems privately held uh, for uh, 10 years now. And that's the way, at least at the moment, we, we all expect it to say. Got a number of customers. Some people are, are quite enamored by seeing that they're in a big company. So we're able to list uh, a number of companies, but financial services, manufacturing, utilities, and uh, telecommunications, including Telecom Argentina, where I uh, wasn't here this morning because I uh, visited them and uh, had a discussion about how things are going there. So in, in progress, as some of the uh, residents here may know, Telecom Argentina merged with another uh, telecom company, so they're even bigger and continuing to use small talk for their inventory app and uh, management provisioning, service provisioning. Government, there's uh, some uh, government entities that have been using it for a long time, and uh, we don't always get to hear a lot of details. Um, for a while, I had a security clearance and was able to do some consulting at one of the intelligence agencies in the U.S., but uh, then uh, we partner with a number of organizations who um, have different complementary tools uh, that we build on them or they build on us. We are active in the community. Um, I've been coming most of the years to small talks here in Argentina, starting with the first, first uh, year it was offered. And we continue to go to ESAG. Uh, we're part of FARO and so on. This is, uh, at least was our team at one point. We've had a couple editions, or at least one edition since then. Um, I think we've shown Kurt uh, as a new member uh, now a few years. Um, Andreas Valoon is well known in the community. He is actually pursuing a PhD, a doctoral degree in mathematics at Oregon State University, I believe. And so he's nearby and uh, works with us over the summers and uh, there's some anticipation of him uh, being a permanent part eventually. Alyssa, I uh, graduated from Portland State with a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. Just earlier this year, she's been with us since the summer and uh, is getting uh, the process of indoctrination into the small talk uh, activities. One of the things we do like to do is introduce Gemstone. Um, we've been told that although we've been around a long time and the old timers know us, that it's a good idea to introduce us again to the students. So, you know, we, we might ask how many of you have a good feel for what Gemstone is and, uh, you know, two thirds. How many have actually used it? Maybe a third, that's good. So we will just mention a few things. Gemstone is an object database. 
a solution to some of the limitations of the traditional desktop environment, where the object space is limited to one virtual machine, you're limited to one host, your object space is limited to RAM, and the object changes are lost on a, from since the last save when the virtual machine exits. So these are characteristics of the traditional uh, client small talk environment. With Gemstone, the object space is limited, is visible to thousands of virtual machines on thousands of hosts. The object space is limited by disk rather than memory. Object changes are managed through ACID transactions, atomic, consisted, isolated, durable, is kind of the standard description of what a database can do. And once a change is persisted, it is guaranteed, again, durable. So we, we have the object model. For small talkers familiar with image-based development, this is just image with a large image, terabytes in size instead of megabytes in size. Scalability, billions of objects, thousands of users, thousands of machines, thousands of transactions per second, terabytes of data. So scaling is what Gemisode is designed for. Concurrency, this is again one of the areas studied in computer science. How do you manage concurrency? Gemstone has multiple user sessions, built-in transactions, commit, abort, things like this. We support both optimistic concurrency and pessimistic concurrency. So with the optimistic concurrency, you just go ahead and do what you want to do and we'll attempt to commit. If there's then a conflict, then the commit will fail. The alternative is optic level reads and write locks where you can guarantee that if you acquire the lock, that lock changes to that object will not prevent you from committing. Native spaces, shared uh, namespaces and private namespaces are available so you can isolate your code from other users and from other, essentially, packages. Security is something that's a big issue in databases. With security, we have object-level security, such that you can own an object and prevent anyone else from seeing it or changing it. So we have user, group, world, read, write, object level security. Then of course, as is typical with the databases, you can log in to the database with the user ID and password. We also support another, a number of other means of logging in that are popular in the uh, corporate IT infrastructure, single sign-on, LDAP, HAM, certificates, and so on. Then and each user can be assigned various privileges, such as changing your own password, changing someone else's password, doing Garhoff collect, backups, and things like that. Now, of course, it's still small talk, turtles all the way down. The way that you interact with the database, all objects, classes, methods, meta classes, blocks, exceptions, were, as far as we know, ANSI compliant um, in, in all things. So large collections is probably the primary thing that you would expect to be different for a database. Millions of objects can be in a collection. And to handle that efficiently, we support indexing using B-trees. So 
even if you have millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of objects in one collection, a select, detect, um, other things like this can be done with extreme efficiency, very, very fast. Interfaces to other small talks. Um, what if we talked about the primary things that Jettison has from a database perspective? One of the things it does not have is a GUI front end. And so this is intended for a server environment. A number of front ends are available. The vast platform, visuals, there are some uh, things that we're working with Faro. We have a um, Dolphin open source set of tools available. We interface to C libraries, and there's a Java interface, interface to relational databases with Oracle, Postgre, Fibase. The Platforms, Linux, Mac, but Mac is both x86 Intel and the Apple Silicon or the ARM. Um, ARM is also available for Linux. I'm running Linux on a Raspberry Pi, uh, Linux and Gemstone 64 bit. So I can run a full version of the database on a Raspberry Pi. Um, there are some others that uh, are Oracle, uh, Solaris, IBM. We're hoping to wean some of the customers off of the more obscure platforms so that we don't have to keep testing on as many different things. And then, of course, clients uh, can be all of the above, plus Windows 10, 11 is a popular platform. Gem Builder for small talk. This is something that supports the two object space where you can bring objects in. We have a library that you install into your vast platform or VW, and from that can interact with uh, things directly. JAG is an open source IDE. I've been working on it for about 20 years and uh, using it, it's based in Dolphin. So of course it's Windows, but uh, it goes all the way back to the 32-bit 5X world. And uh, so you can connect to it. Rich set of tools, browsers. Here's an example of the classic um, system browser dictionaries, which you might think of as packages on the left class categories, classes in an alphabetical or hierarchical list, method categories, pragmas, variables as a selection, and then methods and your typical editor. So this is the familiar way to interact directly with Gemstone uh, through a typical IDE. JDide is a fork of Jade, for one of the customers in Europe as it's sponsored or started the development, it allows you to manage source code using Rowan, which is a new package manager, the tunnel file out format, and migrating from other source code management systems. So if you are in an environment, want to move to some of the Git and other things, uh, this is a way to do it. Um, it is written in Dolphin, but it's not following the two object space model. So uh, as directly as the typical gem builder. So it is not a way to manage dolphin code to Genesun. Okay. Um, though, yeah, if you were doing that, I would just file out and get. But uh, this is 
This is a special approach. Rowan is a, a new Shevastone package manager that, that we're looking to uh, introduce to the community that uh, could be used in other environments as well. Life was um, we are not uh, open source free in, the, in that sense. Um, we are proprietary and uh, the virtual machine is uh, our proprietary technology. But, so it's not free as in speech uh, that uh, Richard Solomon wants, but it is free as in beer for any use, including commercial. So you can download it. You don't even have to give us your email. Just download it, start running it. And uh, the video I was showing at the beginning was showing a RPM package manager. I'm sorry, a Debian package manager. So the, if you're on Linux, you could just say apt, get, install, and uh, you're on your own. You're up, you're up and running. License. Um, of course, there are limitations in that. And we do hope that your business is successful enough, so you want to grow. We'll show you that in a moment. Perpetual annual subscriptions. Many people today are looking at a VAR model, where you are not doing this for internal, for running the company, uh, uh, internal operations, but so you're starting a business that you want to put out to the rest of the world. So for that, we negotiate a percentage of revenue and when you're successful, we hope that uh, you become the next Facebook or Twitter or uh, get thought out by Mas, Elon or something like that. Um, so license for the community edition, you can just download it, you get a, a key file, it's done for uh, shared page cache of one gig, 10 gig of disk, and so on. Oh, limited, if you give us your email, we're, we're not going to spam you with marketing. We just are curious to know if anyone's actually using it. And so if you just email us, you bump up to double the shared page cache, uh, five top 50 gigabyte disk, and so on. Then we do have prices uh, for uh, increasing the size for this air and into use at the different levels. An easy on ramp for you to groom your business until, until it's really successful. Support, um, 24 by seven emergency mail list. Again, with the free version, you're going to be limited to the mail list for support, but we uh, it's not real active and we monitor it so you're likely to get good answers there. Roadmap, what are we doing? Where have we gone? Um, a couple months ago we did release version 3.7 so that is the latest and um, anticipating an um, update to that. 3.6 um, with a couple of releases this year that was up until September, the most recent. Item is in 3.6, support for data at risk encryption. Um, again, some of the high order businesses are looking for different kinds of encryption. And then um, ways of starting or stopping then perform on the server is one of the features that we have a small talk method that can actually shell out to uh, essentially a Linux front or Unix front. So uh, there is uh, the ability to limit that in some ways because you might not want everyone just typing rm slash. Um, so there. Immediate objects are one of the classic ways that in small talk that we improve performance and limit the size. And most of us are familiar with the fact that small integers are immediate. We now have not just small integers, 
fractal and day, day and time, scale decimal, and other things, so that we can put more objects into a more limited space. Again, 64 bit gives us lots more bits to, to address that. Uh, then G list can be output as JSON. Uh, and Amazon, the customer keys, you can store key in Amazon, encrypt the data in JEMSON, and this allows you and your customers to have more fiery advantage than to secure. 3.7 performance, a lot of performance improvements, uh, lots of things faster. Uh, Planetius is a system for monitoring, so we now have in a place to Prometheus. Here's an example of the web page showing the sort of things that uh, Prometheus starts for you. Faster VM on X86, this is for the native web optimization island, particularly data summer, whether we are very some interest, so send out things well benchmarks saying I, I've cut another 9% off of this loop or another 30% off of this. So a lot of, a lot of improvements we're looking at there. Azure customer key, we have the Amazon one. Now uh, people are wanting to use Azure. Faster instance migration, open SSL, upgraded SSH has the new class. FFTP has classes for uploading and downloading. Read streams, uh, now there's a read byte stream that's optimized for strings and byte objects. Unicode, more support there. And cryptography, um, we had some methods before that performed slightly different. We were returning uh, the integer and uh, in Faro, it returns a byte array, so for we were returning a string, and now uh, Faro does a byte array, so we can support that now. File system, a uh, port from the Faro file system class now is available in Gemso. Secure sockets is the uh, thing that we use for FFH and uh, TLS socket interface. I kept thinking I was breathing heavy into the microphone, and then I realized it was quieter. Yes, that's okay. Uh, so we mentioned immediates. Immediates are a nice way to reduce the size of your uh, image or repository. We now give 16 immediates available to the customer for you to define immediates. So you could, for example, keep money as an immediate in your environment, in your database. So these are things that we had customers who say, I've got, you know, tens of millions of these objects and they're really just small things that are holding of, you know, this many bits of data. Could you let me make it an immediate? So now um, we are cutting down the size of some of our customer databases, you know, by tens of millions of objects. Passwords to be able to log in one at a time. So one time passwords uh, for a single login. This would allow you to create a new session from within a session or to give uh, a user a way of resetting their password. Rowan, um, they all is uh, active on the community and uh, this is a package manager that he's got a good bit of information on. Native, so we did 3.1, we're looking for native code on R and uh, more improvements there. 3.8, more support for package managing and Faro. Um, 
J Dite should be available. Uh, that is uh, again something J Dite for Faro. It's something Dale's working on. We have Java Connect for Postgres, Java Connect for RabbitMQ. Um, these are the things that are available on GitHub open source projects. And before we finish, I'd like to just touch briefly on another thing. So I'm going to switch over to this microphone and then this side. So as is the media I've pulled without. So I'll come back to this. With web applications is one of the common uses since since we are a database and behind uh, the and in a server without a traditional front uh, front facing British client. You know, the majority is the PAP client, but uh, many people just like having a native app. So I have some private projects. Uh, at the beginning, I showed a brief demo of installing on Ubuntu with Debian packaging. And then we, I think I'm gonna skip that and go to WinGS. We have in Dart, for example, there's a package called Shell, where you can define a router, then define get for this path will return this, get and for that path will return that. In WJS, there's something called Express, where you can define get and provide a path, and then you can provide essentially an anonymous method or a block that's passed the request and a response, and you have your code that provides the response. So what I have done in Gemstone with a library called WebGS is you define a router, you give it a path, and you say, when this path comes, do this block, execute this block. So with a request for films, we'll send you all the films. If you request one film, then we'll pass in the ID to your block, and you can then send back the film. If you ask it for the number of views, you can say, here's the views. In fact, we can even do a post where you post or put where you provide um, more, more of uh, more detail things that you want. So in, in my code, um, let's see, let's see. This again is just my code that's here. And then I can, through a, a simple request, um, post postman, for example, just say, give me this film. So I think that this is a very simple way to create a web backend or a, a JSON backend. It's just simply, here's the way I want to handle this request. Okay, I think that's the 30 minutes if we started five the bit light. Any questions? How did the code would it be to have a, a, a client for a, a lot supported as Swato? It depends. So how difficult would it be to have a client for another small talk? Is that, that's the question. Yeah, if we for a, a client small talk, uh, able to use the, the, the gemstone uh, data, but you may need maybe not the jaded uh, algorithms, but nice to be able to set it or load uh, data. Yes. So all interaction with Jettison is actually through a C library. So we have a C library 
And so any programming environment that has an FFI capability can make calls to a C library. And if you can make calls to a C library, you can make calls to Gemstone. So that's how I've done it in Dolphin. That's how we do it in on the Bass platform in Faro. I've done it with Ruby, Python, Dart. Anything that has an FFI can have a Gemstone um, library.